Hi everyone, Mike Mo here. So I got my Segway GT series scooter earlier this week. Uh, it was actually shipped out September 2nd, and I probably would have got it over the weekend or on Monday, except it was Labor Day weekend. So I did an unboxing a couple of days ago, and I had a chance to you know test out the scooter and ride it. Uh, I'm gonna produce a couple more videos on it, maybe, and you know, use it as part of my everyday ride for a lot of practical purposes, really. But obviously, it's also kind of fun. But I do have a lot of other uh, fun things that I can ride um, outside already, and you can actually see some of those. So I'm a big fan of Segway products. Now, the Segway uh, Super Scooter GT Series is, of course, their top line. And uh, I'll, I'll just keep it really short and straight. I, I did a video about it and uh, when the campaign was out and I mentioned I was getting the GT2. And I would just say that uh, it has delivered 100% on the promise so far. Okay. In terms of, uh, you know, what, what they said it would do. And uh, that is reaching a really ridiculously fast speed for a scooter. It's 43.5 miles per hour. Uh, mine only shows up in kilometers per hour. And frankly, when I was going fast, I really didn't want to look down at all. You really got to be on top of your game and paying attention, particularly since uh, there were some things that I probably should have prepared before getting the scooter. Like a lot of you guys, I was wondering when this was actually going to come. And uh, I don't know what was going on with whoever was in charge of telling everybody about their tracking information, but clearly that kind of failed. It would have been nice if they gave people more up-to-date stuff, as you can see in, in the discussion in the forums on Indiegogo. There's so many discussions and there were a bunch of disgruntled people. You kind It, it kind of seemed like they were just really, really angry about um, the updates. So first of all, when they did the campaign, they were promising that well, not promising. It's not really promising. They, they they were promising just basically one thing was that you were guaranteed that you will get this product because for the most part, uh, they were pretty much done with it. They were done with building it. Uh, it was just a matter of logistics and fine tuning all that stuff before getting it over. And this was done months ago. Okay. So it's, it's just this big, huge effort to finalize everything, get it boxed and shipped over to all the different countries. I can appreciate that. I mean, they raised $1.3 million for this project. So that's a lot of people who have backed this project. So they were supposed to deliver by August. That passed. Then September Labor Day weekend, we still got nothing, no information, only saying something to the effect that, hey, uh, we are going to, we already have like 100 13 of these ready to go and that they're already shipped, but no one got any tracking numbers. Big mistake, big mistake. People were really, really angry on here. It's just really kind of shocking. Um, I didn't really expect to receive it this week. I honestly thought, okay, great. You know, when it gets here, it'll get here. They already missed their deadline, uh, which was very unfortunate, but um, I'm, I was lucky to be one of the first ones to get it. Okay. I'm definitely not sponsored. I didn't get any of this stuff for free. So if you look on YouTube, uh, you'll see that there are a lot of people who got it way, way beforehand. And I think one of the big questions people were saying was, uh, you know, Mike, uh, let me know or uh, can we just see what you get? Because uh, I want to know whether or not the version that you get is the one that everyone else gets, like uh, like the ones from China. And I can say, looking at some of the videos, which I, I watched some of them, uh, I can say that they're extremely close or very, very close to um, what I got over here stateside. Okay. So I'm definitely one of the first to actually post a video, maybe the first to post a video of, uh, of, of actually receiving and unboxing the actual one from the Indiegogo campaign. So I believe it's the same, right? I, I didn't see anything uh, really changed or or updated, you know, maybe it's just that I have the English manual. In fact, I even got two different uh, AC type adapter heads to use uh, one internationally, maybe I think European standard or Chinese standard, and then the other US, USA standard. But other than that, I didn't, I didn't really see anything else different. Um, I do wish that in the app, I was able to, that I, or the app and a scooter, that um, I can switch it to miles per hour. I think that's just a matter of me looking at the manual. I didn't bother reading the manual. It's very straightforward. 
In fact, I was so straightforward uh, when I received it and I unboxed it. It was just really a matter of uh, attaching handlebar. Okay. Very beefy handlebar. But before you do, this is what I would do I, is I would prepare it and get an AirTag, an Apple AirTag, uh, particularly if you use uh, an iPhone. Okay, or if you don't, I think it's it's a good reason to get you into the get you into the Apple program because AirTag is hands down the best uh, uh, item tracker overall. Okay, you're gonna get you're gonna get massive tracking on this just because there's just a massive amount of people using uh, Apple iPhones and and anytime this gets close to an Apple iPhone iPad uh, iOS device, it's gonna ping its location, and which is fantastic, and that's what you want for an item tracker. And the battery lasts a long time. I have some from a year ago that uh, I think a year ago. Yeah, I think it's it's been a year. And the battery's still working fine. Uh, un- unlike some other things where if, you know, if I'm tracking my keys a lot, it doesn't work as fine. Anyways, these are, these are where to go. Uh, if you want to go a different route, then you could get some other device, maybe a tile or something. Okay, those are probably the number two, one and two. Don't bother with anything else. But um, before you stick on your stock, I'm just showing the video over here. Before you stick it on, consider sticking it in the handlebar section uh, in in the Segway because it's six screws. It, it really took a while to put the put it on. And, uh, you know, stick one in there. Okay, obviously you want to activate all that stuff and stick that in there before you screw it in. Uh, this way you will have some sort of tracking. All right, I put that in, in the video. That That's one thing I recommend. Get some of that 3M double-sided sticky tape. I'll have a link down below for something like that and just stick one in there, okay? You can stick some more in some other locations. I don't know how risk-adverse you are about it or how much theft you might expect in your location, but I imagine that losing this is probably going to hurt for most of the people that have actually purchased one, okay? Because it is expensive, all right, so uh, that's one thing I want to say in terms of preparation. Of course, you can always unscrew these six screws and uh, y- you know redo it later. But I-, I suggest while you're waiting for your scooter, anyways, go ahead and do that. Another major thing that I was not prepared for, I was looking for, but I was not completely prepared for, is that uh, you should get more protective gear. Okay, so I'm talking about motorcycle helmet, full face helmets, things like that, things that will save your melon. Uh, from being crushed, uh, say something horrible were to happen. And frankly, I think it's really a matter of time. Uh, it's not if you will crash, it's when you will crash, because everybody crashes sooner or later. So you want to think about what state of protection and armor, I'm just going to call it armor. What kind of armor do you want to have on your body when that happens? Okay. Uh, So writing this was completely exhilarating, and I did not have a super amount of protective gear. So um, I, you know, I'm generally, uh, I'm not a crazy writer. I was just getting from, typically from point A to point B and as safely as possible. And when you have this much uh, speed and power and performance uh, that you're writing standing straight up, you know, you're going to notice a couple of things. So you're going to want to hold on really tight (laughs) and make sure you're in the right mode. Okay. And uh, start out with eco mode. I'd say, you know, there's a safety mechanism actually before you get in here is that you actually have to ride like, I believe, um, uh, between one and two kilometers before you can unlock the other fast modes. So get familiar with that before you get going. And um, also note that for whatever reason, when I was riding it, I thought I told it to not automatically power off the throttle. But as I'm waiting at a stop sign, uh, the unit automatically switches to park mode. So I'm not sure if that's a bug on the app, a bug in my settings or something, but I I thought that was kind of annoying for me because when it was time to go, uh, I was getting out and there was a uh, construction thing going on. They had to hold up a sign, you know, to hold the traffic and it was great. So they held the traffic so that I I can move out of that construction area safely. And, you know, so the guy's holding up, he tells the cars to stop and I'm busy sitting there like, you know, nothing's happening. And I'm just, and I was like, oh great, this is, this is horrible. Uh, 
yeah, I don't want to waylay anybody and it's kind of embarrassing. So get used to watching the video about setting the setting the settings up and uh, adjusting the speed mode and know that it will, for whatever reason, it will switch back to park mode. And that is probably a safety reason. So you want to learn how to quickly, you know, turn it to the uh, mode that you want so that you can get going right away. Um, you know, it could be a safety reason too, or a safety issue if, if that were the case. So, uh, yeah, so, so that's one thing. Um, get the motorcycle protective gear. I have some stuff coming in later on this week. You know, when I got back, I made sure I did some research to figure out. And for one thing, yeah, I want a full face helmet because I still want a face to come back to and I want to keep my teeth if at all possible, if something, you know, when something does happen. Okay. And, uh, you know, and I'd like to keep my hands, uh, get some shin, shin protection here and, and maybe some other body armor uh, to um, wear when I'm going out on the GT2. Okay. So that's definitely one thing. You know what? I was going to already do this already for my e-bike, my event and adventure bike, which does 28 miles per hour because it is a class three e-bike. And, you know, at that speed, it was already ridiculously fast. Not ridiculously fast. I want to say it's about as fast as I probably want to go on an e-bike of that class. This feels like it is definitely set to go that speed and do it well. Okay, so there's nothing rickety, nothing odd, nothing strange about it. Nothing like twirly or twerky with uh, with any of the steering or the movements of it. This is really, really a solid ride. And you, I guess you really needed that size in order to... Um, to to achieve that, the size and the weight, the suspension, the double wishbone, everything all worked out really nicely. Um, one other thing you want to do is make sure that you, uh, you know, have a pump. Get ready to pump your tires because when you get them, they're going to be like 25 psi or something low. And you know, even though it feels like it's enough, you probably want to get it the optimal psi, which according to Sidewall was 50 psi. So you're going to want to get a pump too. Or, you know, something that can gauge it getting up to 50 PSI. I use a uh, little Ryobi um, hand cordless pressure thing. That seems to be my favorite one now because it runs off a of battery. And, you know, that, that gets it working. And you're going to have to use the adapter, too, to pump up the tires. There's this little long adapter to um, get it right in that spot, unless you already have a whole good pumping setup, which is great if you do. So those are some things you're going to need to do besides, you know, plugging into charge. Uh, there's two chargers. You want to plug the, both of those in there to charge as fast as you can. Uh, presuming you want to ride really quickly, it does have a massive battery pack, of course. Now, real-world use, I feel like even though this thing said that it was going to do 55 miles on a charge, up to 55.9 miles of range, max range, I really think that's just in lab testing in eco mode. Uh, I and probably going really slow. There's a star on here. And I think whenever they have an asterisk somewhere, that means, hey, you should read the fine print. And unfortunately, down here, I cannot find the fine print. But that is probably going at a really slow speed in single drive mode and not double. Because uh, I tell you, when I rode um, the scoot, I think I did... One of the first trips I did was to go out and have uh, lunch over in, uh, I think it was in Cupertino. Okay, next city over, right? Past the Apple Park, uh, all the way down over there. And I did uh, a mix of eco mode and sport mode and also two-wheel drive. So there and back round trip, I was already down a certain percentage, way more than I thought that should have happened. So... um. Yeah, so don't expect to go 55 miles if you tend to ride in sport mode, which I presume a lot of people will probably do. Okay, I had no problems, uh, you know, accelerating from the get-go. It felt like I was riding like a motorcycle, motorbike. It's very, very solid. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't have any other issues along the way um, other than that, you know, from, from, from standing in line waiting for the light to change the Segway automatically goes to park mode. I hope that there's an option in the future in the app to fix it. Now, I am, I've am i only been running the app 
So I've only been running the app on an iPhone. Maybe on Android, the experience is a little bit different. Maybe there's some other options there. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll try that a little bit later to figure out if there's something going on with that. So yeah, the charging time is eight hours, okay? Uh, because it is 1,512 watt hours in the GT2 and 11 hours with, uh, well, actually, you know, with the GT1, they only give you one charger, but you can get a second charger, I, I presume, to bump that on down. And I presume in that case with two chargers, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cut that in half. So it's going to be five and a half or six hours. I think that's it. I think those are the main things you want to do. You know, get that protective gear. And if you're going to be riding at night, even though the headlight's going to be bright enough, you'll probably want some visibility stuff around you. I did a little video about the lighting modes that are available on the on, on the Scoot. And I think that the problem with that is that, uh, you know, the rear light is just really low to the ground. Okay, so they're not going to be able to see that as far or depending on the certain conditions that you're riding in. It's just not going to be as visible as something as, as someone with a light, like let's say in the helmet. So I went ahead and purchased a helmet, full face helmet, and I'm going to have some lights. Uh, I, I'm going to have some lights that just stick on to, onto the helmet so that I have the light at the brightest part possible. I, yeah, I so I had a great time riding it so far. Haven't ridden uh, a lot on it. And uh, the braking performance is fantastic. It's it's really great to have real brakes. It's very solid. And I think those things are going to be lifesavers. It also went over all the bumps and a po you know minor potholes. No problem. One thing that I did find was a little bit more annoying is because this thing is so big and so heavy at 116 pounds, when I get to a location, I'm looking for a ramp to roll it up, okay? Or an alternative route to go to the area where you park your bikes, okay? Oh, which brings me to another thing, final thing too. While you're waiting for your GT1 or two, you get a good lock. Uh, I went overboard and I got a New York forget about it lock. That thing weighs 20 to 30 pounds, it feels like. And I think that is overkill for the area that I'm in. Maybe not in the area that you're in, but the area that I'm in. It's heavy. I got to put on a backpack. I put that in there and it feels like I'm carrying around extra 20, 30 pounds because I am. And it, it is just a beast. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be overkill for a lot of you guys, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to have it to just to make sure to ensure that uh, my scooter and I'm, I'm also obviously using it for for my e-bike um, is going to be there. And it's not so bad when I'm using on an e-bike because there's actually like places to put said, I, you know, I actually have racks and stuff. So with this, the other thing that I also recommend too, in case you haven't done it before, is to get one of those um, handlebar bags. And Segway had a giveaway for the thing that I missed. And you're going to want that because if you look here, there's no place. This this is, of course, representation of, of the actual handlebar. And it's very, very close to what it is. There's really, um, I think that's one of the big things that's different about this is that it looks really nice. It feels very good, but in in terms of practicality and attaching things such as my phone, for instance, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So I haven't figured the part out on how I'm going to mount things here yet. I imagine there's going to be some other creative solutions that are going to be available for that. But in the meantime, you probably want to get something such as a handlebar bag for it. And there's many varieties for it. I have one that does not hang at all from this coming, so I'm going to try that one out. Segway sells one that hangs from it. The key part that you want to watch out for is you want that bag to hang down a little bit further from the light. Okay, so it's going to have to have one of those long, um, long straps, if you will. So two long straps coming down and some straps that hold it directly to the uh, scooter. And I think in terms of size, uh, some very popular sizes go all the way up to four liters. Uh, I really don't know what to expect from that until I get one to try it, but I do recommend getting one because, well, at least over here in California, it's been extremely hot and you're going to want some water. Okay. So, you know, carry some you know, water, some other valuable stuff, your keys, uh, your phone, you know, stick it in there so that it's a little bit safer while you are writing. God forbid if anything were to happen. Hopefully it provides some sort of protection from uh, from from impact or from you losing anything 
while you're on the go. And hopefully uh, by putting your phone at least away, you won't be so keen on looking down at it while you're writing. Just the other day, someone on next door caught on dash cam how this bicyclist was biking on a sidewalk, which, by the way, is illegal over here where um, where I live. And it's just biking along the sidewalk with no hands probably on on the on the um, handlebars at all. I think the person was looking at a phone, just kept biking along. And there was a car, a truck, cargo van that pulled in ahead of him. And he didn't even stop. I mean, he only knew what was going on like at the very last second before impact and then try to turn wave a little bit. He just smashed right into the van. Like... Yeah, and he was going too fast for the sidewalk, too. If you're going to ride on a sidewalk, you're going to do it at a walking pace, hopefully. Because the sidewalk's for pedestrians, you know. And the only reason why you get on sidewalk is for safety reasons, such as, uh, you know, you're bringing your kid out and they don't know how to ride a bike and they're on the trainer wheels or something. Or, you know, to get around some sort of traffic area where it's way more dangerous for you to be on the road than to be on a sidewalk. But when you do that, you know, make sure that the, that you know the dangers of, of being on a sidewalk. Namely, that people don't expect you to be riding so fast on a sidewalk. So the van person may have seen the bicyclist, but certainly didn't expect the bi- bicyclist to just ram right into, into him. Okay, he, was, he was going too fast. He was going about as fast as traffic was on the sidewalk, not paying attention. Didn't even bother breaking, just smashed right in. Luckily, the guy's okay. And that brings me to another point. You know, um, I'm here looking at this. It says breakaway, full throttle head with this the Segway. And um, they don't advertise this enough, but the legalities of wherever you're riding these, they say they're not going to be responsible for, which makes complete sense. So they're trying to warn you, even though they're showing you all this stuff that's going on here. For instance, that guy is clearly doing a complete ride off of the, uh, you know, some office building area off the stairs. Show off the suspension. My bet is that there's no way that person would have been given permission to do that. Um, To do that, to film it, anything. So that is completely on you. They're not going to have legal liabilities with any of that. And uh, that is probably against the rules of the property. And of course you can be kicked off. So don't do stupid things like this that could hurt yourself and other people. Uh, Keep that to professionals and uh, you know, all this, all this other stuff here. Yeah. Don't be doing this on the streets where other cars are driving around you or people around you. Just be safe. Don't be an idiot. And hopefully you will uh, live long enough to make it another year while riding this monster of a beast of of a Segway. Plus, when you do stuff like that, you ruin it for the rest of us. Okay, as far as I know, okay, I'm not a lawyer. It's not legal advice, but you probably want to look at your local scooter laws and regulations and see what's, what's, uh, you know, what is allowed and what is okay and where you got to be and what speed limits you got to set at. And in most jurisdictions here in the United States, uh, traveling above 20 miles per hour, I believe, is technically not allowed in most places. Okay. Now, with that said, I felt way more comfortable going way above 20 miles per hour, going down the highway on, uh, okay, th- there's a road here called Wolf Road, which is, you know, heads down to Cupertino and also uh, El Camino Real, which is also a very major street up here. And I wouldn't want to be going slow in some of those cases if I can help it. It's better to keep up with traffic. But on a caveat of that, on the on the flip side of that is that um, a lot of times the drivers aren't expecting you to be going that fast. So they can cut you off if they're trying to make a right because they're trying to pass you so that they don't have to wait for your slow your slowness. I was going to say something bad. So they don't have to wait for you. And so they would speed up and cut you off and make a right. I almost ran into a car because of that if I were not paying attention. Of course, I was paying attention, and, I'm, and this didn't happen on my scooter. I was just 
imagine this could happen to anybody. But this happened to me while I was riding my e-bike. And they definitely underestimated how fast I was going, which I was going close to uh, 20. I was going over 25 miles per hour on a highway, which was completely legal. And, you know, that could have ended up pretty bad if I wasn't paying attention. So, you know, I think the key thing there is to be as um, to be as aware as possible while you are writing one of these. That's that's one of the things that I want to get across. So get that protective equipment, get that protective gear. Once that stuff comes in, I'll probably be doing more writing. And also, if I can go out and not get scorched by one, it's like 106 degrees outside right now. And uh, it was not fun when I went yesterday, standing out there in the sun, waiting for the traffic light to change. We have some pretty long traffic lights here. So that that was not fun. So get some sunscreen. You don't want skin cancer wherever you are. If you have, if you are part of this heat wave, uh, you want to know, but I, I, I forget my sunscreen sometimes. Yeah. So get that bag so you can stick in some sunscreen, stick in a nice lock. Uh, I also recommend getting one of those vibration alarm locks things. And unfortunately, as I'm looking online on, um, Amazon, trying to find one of those, they're all roughly the same. So you can just get the, one of the lowest price ones. I'll let you know how one of those goes. And I think figuring out where I'm going to mount it is going to be a little bit more of a challenge because there are very few mounting points that make a lot of sense on here. I'm probably going to have to drill something in this uh, rear plate here. I'm probably going to remove this, mount the light slash alarm on here in one location. And if I put one in another location, it's going to be stuck on with 3M tape as well uh, to help, um, help protect it. I did see one that was kind of a two-way type of situation, but it was quite pricey. I didn't want to risk it. So that's where I'm at with the GT2. I think that they have definitely, they have definitely followed through and produced what I expected them to do. And that is a really refined scooter with specifications to match the price. Now, are there faster scooters for cheap, for cheaper price? I believe there are. Uh, they're not going to be as good performing, frankly, and they're probably not going to feel as safe. Even though I haven't tried one, just looking at the at the um, the construction of it and watching a few videos of these, you know, you'll definitely want to be doing that on a GT series than something else. And I'm not sponsored by Segway, but uh, yeah. So I I think that uh, if you are interested in something like this, they do have a lot that are starting to come in right now. In fact, if you actually order one of these right now, you could probably potentially get these in September or October. The rest of us had to wait like five months, okay, five months or six months after uh, paying up for the crowdfunding campaign. So, you know, you can sort of cut in line. Yeah, the price is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, and uh, and if, if oh, <laughs> this is just too much high performance for you. Note that there is no shortage of other kick scooters out there right now. There's no shortage of uh, kick scooters and mobility devices out there. Uh, there's only probably a couple that I would not recommend. Uh, one of them is don't get the Segway Drift W1. And I think that's it. And then uh, see what the uh, top speeds are in some of these. Some of these are designed for kids only. And probably not the Lumo Personal Robot. That thing is way overpriced, and I think it's really mostly for developers. But uh, anything else is fair game. I have the ES4. Really enjoy that. It's this one right here. This was one of the very popular ones that was used by the Uber, Uber, Lyft, any of those, those scooter companies that uh, had Uber, Lyft, or Lime scooters or something. Very, very popular. Very good. Not so great on potholes. But you know, it's lightweight. I pick it up, stick it in in the um, in a trunk, and you know, you're good to go. Not, not. Uh, it's it's still a little bit bulky. Okay, so keep that in mind. So if you want to you want something that was extra light, you can look at their ES1 series or the Air series. It's very compact, very lightweight, and good for uh, last mile transportation. Whereas the GT that I'm riding is full on can be full on car replacement as long as you are not carrying anything. Because if you are, you know, it's going to be on the backpack and handlebar bag, as far as I know. So it'll zip you from 
point A to point B really fast as long as you uh, don't expect to be carrying a whole lot on it right now. It'd be really cool to figure out if there was some other way to um, jury rig something so that I can maybe expand the cargo somehow just a little bit so I can go to UPS uh, with a scooter with a bunch of Amazon returns, review unit returns that I got to do. And, uh, you know, that'd be great. But for now, it's just whatever I can fit in my backpack. Okay, so that's my initial impressions review. I'm sorry there's not much footage. I haven't given a whole lot of ride on it yet. I've only put in a couple miles on it. And let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I think I think the, re uh, the other reviews, they pretty much cover just everything top to bottom. And I, I guess I don't have too much more to add to that other than maybe some other detail things that really don't matter uh, to a, a lot of you. There's one point of disappointment that I had. I thought that perhaps there'd be a little bit of an upgrade for the uh, deck. It's just, a, it's just a nice thick rubber sticker on top of the surface on the bottom. That's it. Literally, it's a sticker. And uh, you, know, you can peel it off and you can replace it with something else. So hopefully there's some uh, other aftermarket things that can happen. But for now, you know, it'll do. And it was simple and easy and definitely uh, definitely fits in line with the rest of the other scooters. So as long as you're not expecting too much of it, I think that was one of the minor disappointments that I had. But everything else is tuned up just fine. I had no issues. I don't think I need to bring this in to tune up. I don't need to adjust any of the brakes or anything. Everything else came out just fine. So, you know, kudos to that. That's something that you expect from a company like uh, Ninebot Segway, who's definitely been in the business for a while. Okay, that's it for this little uh mostly talking head review let me know if you have any questions down below and uh hopefully if you backed the campaign you get yours soon and if you haven't then you know, now is your opportunity and uh, i'll catch you next video please stay safe and uh try to stay cool if you're here in a heat wave all right thanks for watching